What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Thursday edition of the live stream. Uh, sorry I'm incredibly late, but I'm trying to do some cool stuff for you guys at the end of the stream today. Um, if you like cool stuff, make sure that you smash the likes and subscribe to this channel because cool stuff is very cool, and I want to make sure that you guys get cool stuff on the stream. Um, with that being said, uh, let's dive into this Thursday edition where I'm going to tell you about the next Axie Infinity. Whoa! Insane news. Bringing that to you right now. A lot of you guys have already guessed it. Um, but what's happening? Let's everyone say everyone. Let's uh, mm -hmm. let's say hi to everyone in the stream. Uh, Brad on crypto. What's up, man? B Rad, actually B Rad on crypto. Uh, what's happening? Miran Brezan, Simon Gisler, Herak Gonza, um, Carol. What's up? What's happening? What's happening? Anthony Manore. What's up? What's up? What's up? M Michael Leah. How's it going? Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I definitely wouldn't be chatting up your wife. I've, I've got a girlfriend that I love very much. Um, so definitely, if that ever happens to you, it's definitely my imposter. Um, there's a lot of them going around, by the way. Make sure that you don't fall for uh, anyone named me messaging you on Instagram or something like that that isn't me. Always check my socials. Um, you can just go to my Twitter and do make sure that uh, you got the right Telegram. Um, and uh, my Instagram is kyle for crypto but be careful because people are getting super clever with the way that they actually... Uh, create that account and then they go and try to scam you. So it's not nice. Uh, Mahid Al Aber, what's happening? Woe to Vanquished, what's up? Um, is Pegasi fun? Well, maybe. Uh, hopefully, we can give you a demonstration on this stream. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to set up for. Uh, Klesu, what's happening? Anti, what's going on? Too funky in here, what's happening? Johnny Salmon, what's up, brother? Kl yep. Crypto dude Poland, what's up in Poland? How's it? How are you feeling over there right now with all the tension building? I know the U.S. is sending some troops over there. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. We MMMZ4, what's happening, uh, guys? Welcome to the stream. Good to have you, Koyan, Anti, Adrian. What's going on, Dennis? Where are you guys tuning in from in the world? Let me know. Even from Phuket, we're all right. Phuket in the house. John Carby, Cabberry, what's going on? Also in Phuket here, Jeffrey Verlius, what's happening? Nez, Craig. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream, guys. Tell me where you're coming in from. Let's get this party cracking. So what's going on in the world of crypto today? Uh, we saw some corrections going on. What is that from? Well, my guess is it's about uh, it's about this. Um, it's about this whole uh, Russia trying to invade Czech um, ordeal. Actually, I should get some of my team on here. They happen to be from Czech. Marta, you know exactly what I'm talking about, um, and uh, tell you how she feels about her home country being invaded by Russia. Um, anyway, uh, so if you guys can see me a screen right now, you can. Great. Let's go into the Bitcoin charts. Um, ooh, I was getting super excited. I loaded this one. This green candle started being printed, and now we just have a big, huge correction on this one-hour chart. Um, but basically, guys, uh, you know, this has been trending now forever since here, since this correction. Just Right in this, you know, this anywhere between 39 to really, this is just kind of a flash crash, but really like to this 34, 35K range. So if you're trading, it's probably a good area to trade in. I think that we're going to be within this range for a while, actually. It's my feeling. Unless uh, unless the entire markets get super scared about um, about this whole war situation. But historically, war has always kind of improved the markets. It's been like a reason to, to go employ more people, print more money, all this thing. So... Um, it's a little bit confusing to me, actually, why uh, why word of potential war would um, scare the markets when historically it has always shown uh, us to pull us out of a depression or recession or something like that. So confusing to me, um, but nonetheless, uh, let's bring to you some breaking news because breaking news is fun, right? Um, so look at Mutable X. Mutable X I've been talking about for a while uh, on this channel, and uh, they just announced 29 minutes ago uh, their partnership with GameStop. Uh, if we look at the... Uh, Ba, ba, ba. Let's see. We can pull up the. Hmm. It's pumping. Let me just tell you that it's pumping. Um, I don't know exactly. Let's see if we can look in at Huobi. Hmm. I don't want to pull up my account necessarily. Let's just go to here. And let's look at Mutable X. Because. Um, and guys, it, it's it just was announced 30 minutes ago. I don't know if it means it's a good time to buy or not. Um, but you know, Immutable X is a is a great project that I've been talking about. Look at this candle right here. Boom. Up uh 30% when everything else is being correct is correcting quite significantly. Um, 
you can see a tremendous amount of volume. People seem to like this news. Um, we'll see. You know, when it launches at five bucks, it's still down quite a bit from the um, the launch price. Um, not the price that obviously the VCs and stuff got it for. They probably got it for pennies. Um, but nonetheless, uh, that's the Mutable X news. And next up, we have. Uh, Look at this. These these Fidelity. Okay, I got to hand it to Fidelity. Fidelity has always been, um, always been Bitcoin positive. In fact, my mother, hello mom, if you're watching, uh, she has been uh, actually rolled her 401k, her invest, her, her her retirement fund, into Bitcoin in 2015. All right, go mom. Um, that was uh, impressive, and I'm glad I convinced her to finally do that. It has uh, it has definitely. Uh, paid out significantly more than uh, whatever kind of interest she would have got on this stupid 401k plan. Bitcoin is the 401k plan. Bitcoin is the retirement plan. Guys, it's cheap right now. It's cheap still. Bitcoin, we can we know that by the time anyone should be thinking about retirements, probably if you're watching this, you know, it should be at a million dollars of Bitcoin, right? So don't complain if Bitcoin's at $37,000 or whatever it's at. It means it's more accessible. It's more possible for you to try to attain one whole Bitcoin. Um, but anyway, yeah, Fidelity, head of sales, we started mining Bitcoin and accumulating it in 2014. You could only imagine how much Bitcoin Fidelity has. I don't think they've ever come public yet to tell you how much Bitcoin that they have. But imagine Fidelity. Fidelity is one of the largest asset managers in the entire world. In the entire world. Fidelity is owned by Tiger Management. Tiger Management uh, owns uh, has trillions of dollars under management with a T, with a T, trillions of dollars under management, right? Fidelity, um, and there, and this is just was just tweet, tweeted like today, right? So very proud of their entry, and they want to uh, they want to come and boast about it here. So. Yeah, Crypto Mac says we want it cheaper. I don't blame you, Crypto Mac, but people do complain when the price goes down. It's an accumulation point, right? It's an accumulation point, uh, you know. And uh, let's watch. Actually, let's. Uh, I haven't watched this video yet, but let's let's throw it on here. Here's a video from Coach K talking about uh, the markets and what he speculates is going to happen. Um, I can't say I agree with this yet because I haven't watched it yet. But let's watch Coach's opinion, and then I'll give you my input on it. What up, fam? How you guys doing? So the sentiment in the market for Bitcoin, obviously everyone is looking at Bitcoin, but they're not looking at the macroeconomic structure of other markets like the stock market. And when we're seeing in the SPX, doesn't look that bad, but we're seeing a top type of candle on the daily and we're kind of at this resistance right here on the Dow Jones as well. So we're rejecting off of that level. We're also seeing things like Facebook stock, PayPal stock and other companies stocks getting hammered right now. So before we look at Bitcoin, we have to understand that those things are happening and likely affecting Bitcoin in a negative way. So what we can see right now for Bitcoin in terms of the market is we have this obvious downtrend that we're stuck inside of right now. And we rejected off the 21 day EMA which is usually something that tells us if we're bull or bear on the daily. So right now we're far underneath the cloud. You know, we have a bearish TK cross that happened way up here. We have a bearish Chiku span. So unfortunately for all the people that were getting bullish by these really small candles, which when price action rises, when the volume is declining, that is a bearish divergence, right? So that's something you have to take note of and so we rejected this level and we're coming back down to that 35,900 level which we kind of turned into a little bit of support does that mean that we're gonna get above that this is what i've been saying and i'll continue to say it over and over again bitcoin likes to get up to a little bit of a dead cat bounce before we truly get into that bearish market where we bleed out so we've kind of been bleeding out for three months now I do expect for us to have some type of recovery in this month and into next. And I believe April and May will likely be the time where we actually turn really bearish. Not super bearish. We're going to come down to levels as I've talked to in the past. This $23,000 level would be likely where we get to the bottom. But first, I do believe we're going to come up probably to around this level right here where we're flattening out around $51,000, 52,000. We'll likely pretend that we're gonna get bullish, go in the cloud and reject 
and then come down. And it might only go as far as 48, where you can see this lots of uh, this level that I've drawn from the past. It's likely we're going to go to that level if we don't get there. So somewhere between 50 and 48, likely we'll see a dead cap bounce rally back up before we see a slow bleed into the bottom, which will likely come at the end of the year. So not exactly what we all want to hear, but if we do get that dead cap bounce, which I truly do believe deeply, when that happens, don't get overly bullish. Remember that if you're holding on bags, that will be the time where I'm personally going to be selling some of my tokens that I don't believe in as much. And the ones that I really truly believe in, which I talk about all the time, those ones I'm going to hold for the long term because I truly believe in them. The ones that I'm not too sure, I can't really remember everything that they're doing or they haven't communicated well. Those ones I might be taking some profit on on that dead cap bounce rally. And then we'll see what happens from there. Now, all I can do is look at the technicals and that's what they've been telling me. And as you guys know, I do these things not because of how I feel or what I want. I always want number go up. But the reality is that doesn't always happen. All right, guys. Thanks, Cal, for having me, man. See you guys soon. Okay, guys. Uh, so that was Coach's perspective. Uh, just to give you some technical analysis, uh, I think Coach is one of the one of the more uh, accurate TA guys. He seems to win more than he loses. Um, I'm not really sure about the long term perspective. It's hard for me to to base any TA on long term perspective. Um, that's why I focus on macro news. Um, so, with that being said, uh, FTX, good old Sam Bankman Fried, he buys liquid out of Japan. So to expand in this is this is you know if you have the money to do this. Um, this makes a lot of sense for people because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like deal with the licensing and customer acquisition and blah, 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 blah. Um, so basically, uh, this basically talks about, um, yeah, liquid should now probably become FTX, uh, Japan, I would imagine. And, um, any of the, the tokens trading on, uh, liquid, I would imagine, um, probably are going to get a nice little pump here from this. However, I'm not sure, um, which is uh, which is kind of sad because um, well maybe uh, I don't know, we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> this is a this is a personal thing for me actually. Um, I had a relationship with uh, the guys at Liquid, uh, great guys, and um, but uh, now it makes me uh wish I would have taken more advantage of that opportunity. Um, anyway, moving on from Liquid and FTX, we talk about Alexis Ohanian, who is a co-founder of Reddit along with Aaron Schwartz. If you guys haven't seen the Internet's Own Boy, um, one of the best documentaries out there ever. Uh, talks about Aaron Schwartz, who was a co-founder of Reddit with Alao Hanian. Uh, Aaron was incredible, and uh, the horrible, horrible um, powers that be of the United States got offended when he started making uh, waves in the world. Um, incredible documentary. Again, that's the Internet's own boy. Um, I just recommend that you guys watch it. Uh, it's very powerful, and um, one of the reasons why um, I left the United States. And uh, moving on, so Alexis Ohanian, VC firm, uh, to focus on crypto with $500 million capital raise. So he's got a fund, Alexis, called 776 Management, and they raised two funds, one on an early stage, one on a little bit later stage. Uh, and this is good. So I, I talked to you guys recently, was it yesterday, day before, about, um, about uh, these, all these different VC funds raising a tremendous amount of money um, to invest in early stage crypto projects. So even though, so even though uh, we might see some slowing down in the market, uh, the shortage of funds to invest in new projects uh, isn't there, right? So it's it's like there is a tremendous amount of money waiting to be deployed in new projects, and it has to actually be deployed in new projects because they have a mandate. These funds have a mandate; they can't just sit on the money and wait till the next bull run and deploy in that. They have to deploy now, and uh, and so. You know, this is a, there's ever been a more bullish time for innovation um, with all of these funds that are now going to be deploying. So if you're out there, if you're a new crypto project and it's promising, maybe reach out to 776 Management and, uh, and see if you can get them to fund your new project. Not a bad idea. Next up, Google's parent company, Alphabet, CEO Sundar Pichy weighs in on Web3. He says company is looking at blockchain. <clears throat> this shouldn't be news to anybody. This shouldn't be news at all. Um, if you understand the way any anything works in the world of uh, technology, if Google wasn't looking at blockchain by now, they've probably been looking at blockchain since Bitcoin was created, um, then uh, 
then they would be falling way massively behind, right? Like you have to, you have to, you have to be in in staying ahead of innovation and technology if you're going to remain relevant. Um, why would a why would Google and Alphabet not be in Web three? You want to be stuck in Web two like a dinosaur? Come on, this is ridiculous. So even though this is bullish news, um, and uh, like obviously there's a lot of people who wanted to disrupt Google with like cloud computing and things like that. Um, they are are going to have to try to remain relevant and competitive, and uh, and and really, if they really want to do it right, they really have to create some truly decentralized technology, and that's how they can remain uh, relevant. Is is if they really uh, are able to create technology that actually is centralized, which removes middlemen, uh, removes that uh, value extraction from the picture, like Web two and traditional companies have done, and switches to Web three decentralized type of. Uh, product that actually is value creation, keeping all that value within that token ecosystem. So um, so it's no surprise that Google and Alphabet are coming into blockchain, um, but it is extremely bullish news that they decide to tell you about it now. Um, 78 people watching, 44 likes. Come on, guys, do me a favor. Just tap the like button. If you already, you can't tap it twice though, just once or thrice or five times, seven times, but please not two, four, six, eight, or nine. Or no, nine's okay, not 10 though. Nine's okay. And then you do nine times if you want to. But I don't think it helps the algorithm. But you can try. You can try. But you can go share this stream on your Twitter and tell everyone to watch it. Tell them it's awesome. Tell them this is the best live stream on the interwebs. That's what you could do for me. That would be really, really... I, like, I, I, don't, I don't make any money from these things. I don't plan on making any money from these things. I'm just doing it in the middle of my incredibly busy day uh, because I think that you guys deserve, the crypto world deserves... Uh, an, an unbiased opinion who's going to, you know, uh, or maybe I'm biased. I'm more, definitely crypto biased. That's for sure. Um, but uh, but anyway, let's move on. So I'm talking about me, talking about more about the ecosystem. So Solana's biggest hack ever, 300. And by the way, guys, <clears throat> I don't know why Solana is promising sub-second finality and transactions. I sent tokens in Solana yesterday and geez, it took like four or five minutes. It was like, what is this? Ethereum or Bitcoin? Come on, what is going on here? It's just super, super, super slow. So um, anyway, uh, what this is saying, though, um, is basically that there was a $305 million in crypto allegedly stolen from a $1 billion de de decentralized finance platform. So uh, so basically, there's this warm, 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 warm hole portal um, and there's a DeFi product on Solana. And uh, and like like remember back maybe like, I don't know, six, nine months ago, uh, all of the BSC DeFi products are being hacked and exploited. And it's very, very dangerous to have a DeFi product locking up all this value on new uh, unproven blockchains, right? Like, um, because you can't exploit it. What I don't know, um, what I don't know is, uh, is if any of this is uh, the fault of um, of Solana itself, or if it was strictly from the DeFi protocol, the, the wormhole did say uh, that there was a vulnerability that has been patched, um, and they've offered the hacker a ten million dollar bounty to return the funds. So um, maybe the hacker will do it. Now, uh, sometimes they do it, especially if they leave breadcrumbs of who they are and are afraid of getting caught, uh, like the Poly, uh, Poly, 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 something or other hack that happened uh, early last year that was like $625 million. Um, Poly Network, uh, that hacker returned most of the funds because he was definitely afraid of getting caught. And so he just did that and figured I might as well return the funds, um, which was definitely probably a smart move for him to do. So we'll see about this. Um, I'm sorry if you guys lost money in Wormhole. Um, also, be careful. DeFi uh, is lucrative. However, it is dangerous. Um, you know, we see these kind of uh, reports almost every single day um, about these hacks and things like that. So um, don't place too much of your money in, in one place. Uh, it can be dangerous. And then there's just really no opportunity for someone like Wormhole to replace $325 million. Um, we also saw last week the uh, the whole controversy with magic internet money. And uh, and then we started seeing um, uh, Sifu or whatever siphoning a uh, hundred ETH at a time, just um, from the project itself. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's still a it's still a wild wild west. That's for sure, guys. Um, what's up, everybody? If you're watching, uh, thank you for watching. By the way, appreciate it. And um, and let's move on. So Disney looks to hire NFT expert 
to lead its efforts in the space. And guys, uh, but anyway, uh, Disney looks to hire NFT expert to lead its efforts in the space. So Disney, of course, is basically creating a metaverse and uh, and they, you know, they would be silly not to. They have to recreate the entire environment of the metaverse, right? For all the people who can't go to Disney, Disney World, everyone wants to go to Disney World. But, but you know, what? You, why would you only go to Disney World once, once a year for your birthday or something when you can go to Disneyland a bunch of times per year uh, in the metaverse? Wow. Um, so go Disney uh, and their new NFT expert. And congratulations, whoever gets that job. That would be a fun job, just creating NFTs uh, for Disney. That would be a great job. Um, but... Bullish news, right? With just every single day in the NFT space, massive news. This company, that company, this guy, that girl, whatever. They're all buying NFTs. Board Apes, Disney, Adidas, you know, Nike, all of them. All of them. Um, let's get into uh, uh, this news. So, okay, this is cool. Um, if you're a United States citizen, I guess. Uh, basically saying if you're Diamond Hands, uh, you don't have to pay taxes. Uh, only, only the people who are trading a bunch, um, have to pay taxes on your trades, but if you're just diamond handing it, you don't have to pay tax to IRS. I mean, that's cool. So one more reason just to hodl, um, you know, maybe it doesn't, maybe, uh, paying your taxes, um, makes more sense than hodling. I don't know. That's a decision that you'll have to make based on your own strategy, but nonetheless, this is bullish news for crypto taxes. Um, if you like taxes, this is a uh, good for you, I guess. Um, well, you know, not one really like taxes, right? But uh, but it's a it's a it's a it's a harsh reality that we all have to face. Um, August eight 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 says, "Have I minted any NFTs recently? No, but I'm looking forward to the Jurassic Punks one. Um, actually, no, I did, I did, I I, I minted one from the Galactic Fight League. Um, on Solana. Uh, it's a, actually a friend's project, so I have no idea how bullish I am on that one or not. Looks sick." They really put a lot of work into the uh, the art. Um, doesn't have a massive community yet, but it doesn't mean it can't pick up a lot of traction in the future. Um, I'm also not sure how I feel exactly about the Solana ecosystem for NFTs, uh, just because it seems like everyone who has serious NFTs is going on the Ethereum network still. Um, I've yet to see something. Guys, don't hold me to this. I'm not glued to NFTs right now. I'm much more in crypto gaming and uh, and and tokens than I am in uh in NFTs. So for the big story tonight, let's move on to Pegasi. If you guys guessed it, you guessed it correctly. And what I want to do mostly is just, you know, why I was trying to have having like why I started this this whole live stream late was because yeah, and Jungle Freaks, guys, we have a we have a stay tuned because we've got an interview with Jungle Freaks coming up soon. So you guys will get some updates, updated information behind the scenes. I still hold all of my Jungle Freaks. I'm quite bullish on the project. Um and you know, it, it, it just takes it just takes persistence, guys. It just takes persistence. You have to be a persistent mofo to succeed in this industry. Same thing with tokens, same thing with NFTs. You have to one, be good at building community, two, be good at engaging your community, three, be good at promising and delivering on a roadmap, and and four, um just continue to, to push on, you know, because things get hard and people give up. And the people that keep pushing on are the people that are going to create legacies in the space. So uh, I believe tomorrow morning I've got an interview with uh, with Jungle Freaks. I don't know when that will air. Maybe tomorrow night, maybe Saturday, something like that. But nonetheless, um, that's happening tomorrow. If you're excited for that, make sure you smash likes. All right. So let's talk about Pegasi. Pegasi, what is Pegasi? Pegasi is kind of like D-Race or another racing game or another racing game. And you've got these, uh, these, these what are these things called? Unicorns? Or uh, they're called Pega, but it looks like a unicorn. Um, and basically the robotic unicorns or pegas that you're racing. And, uh, and what I wanted to do on this was I actually wanted to go and, and try to play the game uh, because people are making way more money on this than they are on Axie. And so I'm talking to a lot of different guilds and scholars, and they're all, they're all saying, F you, Axie. Hello, Pegasi. You're making me way more money. Uh, the, the cost, the barrier to entry is significantly less per money made uh, per pega. And uh, and so people are just are just getting rid of you know Axie's economy. Look 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 look. Let's look, look at this. Watch, watch this. Okay, vigorous. This is the this is the look at this. Five hundred and forty percent in the last thirty days. It's gaining popularity. But I'm bringing this to you guys. Watch this. Watch this. Hold up. Watch this. Hold up. Hold up. Watch this. Pegasi. So forty four million dollar market cap. 
Holy crap. $44 million. Let's go look at Axie. Axie. So Axie, $3.347 billion. Oh, Pegasus. Thank you, hard time, uh, hard timer. That, that, uh, I'm not sure why my, all the help in the room didn't help me with a, pe a Pegasus. His rebuttal was it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, pe it, it, it's excuses. <laughs> excuses. <laughs> He's got to have excuses for everything. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. 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 So, um, basically, actually, so what is guys? Uh, maybe you can help me out here. What is what is uh three point three billion divided by forty four million? Let's see what what potential it has. Let's just say everyone fled away from Axie because no one can make money in Axie anymore. Because right, SLP Smooth Love Potion. What is it? A penny right now? Let's see. A penny. It's probably a penny, right? It's a penny. Forty four million. Oh, SLP is only. It's it's less than a, it's even it's only 0.89 cents. That means that that means even the best even the best players of of Axie are only making 200 times 0. 0.0089 cents equals what a dollar seventy eight a day. Now they have to split times. Let's say let's say they split. Let's say they 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 split. Uh, 50%, even, even the best guilds are giving their players 50% or no, 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 70% for some of them. But like, let's say that like, okay. <laughs> so, so scholar is making anywhere between 89 cents to a dollar a day, which is what you like less than they're going to make at the local McDonald's. Um, and, and the guild itself is making like 20, 30 cents a day and they have to invest a thousand to $1,200 for every scholar, which is going to take them like three years to make their money back. It's completely broken system. So Axie is completely like, just falling apart in front of our eyes. Like nobody, nobody, nobody should be investing in Axie right now. Um, in my opinion, that's not financial advice, but that's my advice. Anyway, look at this is a much better opportunity. $44 million. Hey, that's nice. Okay. So let's go see if we could actually buy some Pegasi. And I see someone in the comments over here says, uh, Cut too funky in here. Press funky. Okay, the buried entry is pretty high, don't you think, Kyle? Eighteen fifty for a cheapest horse. Um, yes. Okay, but think about this. It's like for the best. Okay, I know it's not. The, it's not the. Okay, okay. So for for let's let's say the cheapest team in Axie is probably like six hundred bucks, right? So yes, three times the amount the cost of the barrier to entry for Pegasi, Peg Axie, but. If you're making 50 to 100 times more a day, then it's worth it, right? Worth it. Axes are now 50 US dollars, dude. Um, so, okay. Yeah, but you need like, but that's not what you're going to get for a team. Okay, so maybe you can get a team for 300 bucks, a good team. I'm talking about a good team. And that's going to, but you're only going to produce, again, a dollar a day because even the best scholars are only making, are only getting 200 SLP a day. So even if your barrier to entry, even if axes are like, even if you're, for, yeah, $50 is not getting you the, so 150 is not getting you an amazing axie team, right? That's getting you the bottom of the barrel, horrible entry level. I just came out of high school kind of, uh, Axie team, right? Not like the PhDs or like the professionally trained badass Axie teams, right? So, yeah. So, so anyway, um, so basically with, with Pega, you can make like $50 a day, you know, a hundred dollars a day. This is, this is 50 to a hundred times more than you're making an Axie with a three. Okay. We can even say three to four times, um, a three to four times uh, a cost, right? So what I want to do here anyway is I want to buy some of these things. So I'm looking over here at avocado. Uh, Clin is one of the, is a second uh, least rare founding breeds. Uh, so let's buy this guy. Let's see if I can prove USD. Yes, please. Confirm. I, and I actually bought some of this, uh, these VIS tokens. So maybe I could breed it on here. That would be ideal. Let's go see if we could run a race, though. And this is what I'm talking about, Polygon. Like, Polygon's supposed to be fast, right? Why does it take so long to do anything? Okay. That wasn't so bad. Right now, let's, let's buy it. Come on, baby.
Let's say I'm just reading some comments. See, it's still waiting. Still waiting for, come on, Polygon. Let's go. Chop, chop. Man, if Polygon was running a race right now, it would be dead, dead last. Um, that's for sure. Okay, come on. Okay, anyway, so Pegasi, I think you got 12 horses and they're racing around racetrack. And right now, right now it's totally random. So pretty much they're using an RNG, a random number generator to decide who wins. There is slight, they, they say, I don't know, it's, it, it's hard to know exactly how much this plays into it, but um, okay, now we can buy it. So it's hard to say exactly how much, no, no, no polygon. I don't want to do a medium transaction. I've got a live stream going on fast, please. This time make it snappy. Okay. So it's hard to say uh, exactly the, the forces, the, the character traits of your Pega, um, how much of a role that actually plays into each uh, Pega winning the race. But um, you can just go play and enter your horse or your Pega every time for free. Uh, and play this game and just race, race, race till you, you know, race, race your heart out, and uh, and eventually you're gonna win. And every time you win, I think you get like what, like 160 of these vests or something like that. So it's like, what is it, like 40 bucks? No, 25 bucks or something like that. So if you win, you get like 25 dollars. Boom, cha ching. You have to win once, and you got 25 times your daily, uh, your daily earnings in Axie. I mean, that's awesome. So okay, so I have a horse now. Let's go race, racing. Okay. How do I race? Pick a Pega. My Pega, obviously. How do I do that? Oh, man. I should have learned how to play the game before I put you guys through this. My bad. <laughs> Help. <laughs> okay. So how do I pick my... Okay, let's see. Uh, race. I just want to... Let's see. Action. Copy link. Hmm. Prize pool. 175. Okay. Pick a Pega. I want to pick mine. Ah, I can only pick avocado. Okay. There we go. Starting. Approve. Okay, confirm. Guys, what do you what do you think? Do you think I'm gonna win? Let's put some bets in here. Can we take a dig of bets, guys. What what place what place do you think avocado is gonna get? My horse's name, my peg is avocado. If you're from California, you probably say he's gonna win for sure. I think at some point breeding farms uh, will flood the market and prices will go down and demand for vis will go down um, if no new money comes in. Right. I but I I don't know. So I don't, I don't know enough about this yet to know how the economics work, but I have watched some videos um, when people say that this guy, I think is, I don't forget his name. Um, this guy, oh, let's move, move. What does that do? Okay, I'm gonna sign another one. Blockchain games, man. One of these days, it'll be, uh, one of these days, they'll be uh, suitable for your no coiners from today. They're so kind of compl complicated. Imagine having to tell someone that to go buy Matic um, to go use the Polygon network. Like, Dude, what are you talking about? You're just go play some Roblox or something like that. It will let you win for the first time for a bronze. It better let me win. Shit. <laughs> Rig it if you have to. Just make it look good on the live stream, Pega. This is being broadcast, you guys. If I win, you realize it's going to make your game more popular, right? Smash the likes if you haven't already for, we, for us to win this race. Starting, it says. Come on, let's start. Let's go avocado. Matching. All right, guys, what do you think? Put your bets in. Oh, I got to sign again. Oh, my God. Come on, joining. What? This is the race? Where's the 3D action going on? Come on, avocado. You guys, try avocado in the chat. Avocado. Avocado. Let's go. Come on. Go 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 go! I'm winning! Go 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 go! Go 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 go! Shit! Who is this? Someone! Someone throw a tripwire out there! Come on! Let's go! Avocado! Come on, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Push harder! Avocado! Come on! Come on, avocado! Come on, avocado! Yes! Let's go! Come on, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Push! 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 Come on. Come on. We're, come on. Oh, jeez. How long is this race? Oh, my God. We're doing it. Come on, Avocado. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Push harder. I'm in silver right now. I'm in number two. Come on. Let's go. Someone trip this Juka fool, number 10. Come on. Spring your ankle or something. But dude, 
No. We got second. Got second? We got second, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad. What did we win, folks? Oh, my God. What was that? <sighs> so that's, that's Pega. Look at that. Avocado number two, 144. Not bad. 44 this. All right. Let's see. What did we win? How much, what's this calculation? $11. $11. Hell yeah. In a few minutes, I just want to look at Rupert's looking over here like, what the hell are you talking about, Dad? What's going on over there? Huh, buddy? Dude, we, we, we won $11, Rupert. You know how many treats I could buy you? I can buy you like four or five bags of delicious treats. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. Oh, See right away. Okay. So anyway, we won, guys. So this is Pega. Um, let's go look like this, this vigorous. Um, $11. $11. So that's Pega for you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm 10 minutes late to next call. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, glad, wait, 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 wait. Before I do that, before I do that, before I do that, how about how about some Q and A? You guys have any Q and A for me? Let's, let's go ahead, ask some questions. Man, I'm sweating after that race. It was like actually riding that riding that Pega. Man, it was intense. Okay, like guys, okay, let's see if we any questions in the chat over here. That's second place, man. Impressed, but I'm impressed. I did nothing, but I won second place. Uh, maybe on the next one, maybe on the next one, maybe uh, Monday. Um, actually, what I really wanted to do, but I don't have time to do it right now. I actually wanted to breed some horses. So I, in the meantime, to save you guys some, some time, um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, no, uh, be rad on crypto. I'd like to keep playing, but I, um, I, uh, I think I have a call to attend to or something. Now let's let's check calendar. Uh, Guys, I do have, I, I'm not like a YouTuber by, by, by business. If you guys don't know anything about me, I, I do. Oh, okay. It's a call with the fund. They can wait. They can wait. Just tell me I let $11 to our AUM. What? $11? <laughs> our assets are management from $20 million to $20 million and $11. Oh, yeah. Um, I know. They're going to be very proud of me when I come back into the room. Spent uh, $5,500 for $11. All right. All right. Not bad. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Um, next paid AMA will be probably in like, in like two weeks. We want to make sure that we bring you some really exciting stuff. Um, and yeah, Adrian, 3D would look a lot, a lot, uh, a lot, a lot nicer. Um, I agree with you. I was, I was told by one of my sources, he's doing this again. Like, I don't know what happened. He told me earlier it was in 3D. Look, look pretty 2D to me. You know, I, I think it's going to be in 3D soon with some announcement that uh, that uh, obviously um, it, maybe it's like a coming soon kind of teaser, um, but it'll get there. It'll get there. They're working on it. Um, so uh, so guys, uh, we have Metacon in Dubai, uh, Metaverse, hands on, jump in the Metaverse in Dubai. If you guys want to come out there, it'd be amazing. We're going to be there doing stuff, you know, yelling at people, talking stuff on stage. And, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of games are going to be there. Maybe we can get if Pegasus. If you're watching, make sure you come to Metacon, get yourself a booth, and talk to people about it, get more people to buy some Pegas, pump the bags. Come on, come on. Um, okay guys. Uh, if, if it is, then Axie will be in demand. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, uh, do I have any news on House of Dow and Cryptoland? Um, so Cryptoland, uh, as you guys may or may not know, went through some, uh, it became incredibly viral uh, a few weeks back. Uh, not in the best way. Some idiots posted some stuff on there about like, some really inappropriate stuff um, and uh, took a, a, a couple of really amazing people and, and put them in a really shitty, uh, really shitty space, spotlight. Um, it was horrible. Some people just have, are so terrible. Um, but it, 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 uh, yeah, so I'm still a huge advocate and supporter of crypto land. Um, I think Max and Elena are great, and uh, I just wanted to um, to publicly say that. Uh, and for House of Dao, um, it's absolutely still on the roadmap. Um, but when we are able to get it uh, up and running is another question entirely. Um, it is an incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, ambitious vision, right? Creating a, a communities, physical communities on Earth. Uh, for us all get together around incubate projects, uh, stuff like that. And, um, and so basically, you know, my entire, 
my entire reason for, for wanting to make money is so that I can invest in the projects that I want to build that I think um, would take an incredible amount of work otherwise to, uh, to convince venture capitalists and things like that to do it. So, um, so House of Dow is something that I'm planning on financing myself uh, once I get enough money to do so. Um, so um, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's uh, not, definitely for sure. If we see a massive bull run, um, I'll be able to do that. So that's why I work my ass off. And what I'm doing is really to create an amazing community where people can come gather around like-minded and get out of the rat race. Uh, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, can I use paid network without KYC? Um, depends what you want to use. So right now we have like the paid, uh, which we used to call the DAP, which is the ugliest name ever. I can't even believe that caught name. Um, soon it's going to be called paid markets, which is basically just this business uh, platform. Um, you can do the beta uh, KYC free because it doesn't require any money. But <clears throat> as far as the IDOs, paid ignition, um, you have to do KYC, unfortunately, for now. Um, yeah, there's no really no way of getting around that. Um, am I bullish on Neo Tokyo? I am bullish on Neo Tokyo. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm. I, th I think that Elio and Becker know what they're doing, and uh, and you would betting against them would be a bad idea, in my opinion. Any news on Split launch commit? Split is going to be insane. Actually, um, I, I I I haven't sold my Split, and I still bought, I bought more yesterday. If that tells you anything. Um, all I can say right now about Split is there's massive, massive partnerships uh, in, in coming up in the next couple of months, and uh, and it's been taking them you know a long time. And this, but of course, when you're disrupting a legacy industry like e-commerce, like Split is doing, uh, it's going to take you some time to actually build out the product and get partnerships on board and like onboard them and educate them and teach them how to use Web three technology and blah, blah 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 and the benefit to them of switching like their entire infrastructure to a new Web three type of product. So, um, so Split Split is only like, at, what is it now? Like, so Split Shop X token. Um, Okay, it's at nine cents. Uh, the public sale for Split was uh, like four and a half cents or something like that. So it's only two X times the public sale with a market cap of only 8.3 million. Um, this is basically as low as it's gonna go. Um, oh man, it's, look at that. I can't, you're not sharing, I'm not sharing my screen, but basically there were some nice dips. Uh, well, not huge, it's down to eight and a half cents um, over the past 24 hours. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly bullish on Split. Also, AOs. I see people asking about AOs. Guys, AOs' new website looks sick. Looks sick. Um, add to stream. Boom. Here we go. Look at this. Watch this. Oh, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Mutable X pumping some more. 4.24. My in room analyst says that uh, when America wakes up, it should pump even crazier. <laughs> AOs. AOs. Look at AOs' new website. Guys, AOs is a layer one blockchain. Layer one blockchain with 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 uh, with storage built in, made for streaming and stuff. Like this is incredible. Like no other block. If, if you guys don't know how blockchain works, mostly um, you know that like a lot of storage is, is done off chain and like IPFS, interplanetary interplanetary file system or storage or something like that system. I think it is. Um, but uh, but AOS is a layer one blockchain with full Ethereum and Cosmos interoperability using EVM and Wasm smart contracts. Um, this main net, I believe launches in like March or something, uh, and split. Okay. So now I look at AOs. Let's see where AOs is in market cap right now. Um, guys, what you have to realize is, is, is any project that I'm very bullish on that, like maybe hasn't done so well in the past, it's because they've been building. So it's, it's not as I would say like as ideal of entry point as something like, um, like split, for example, it's a $70 million market cap right now, AOs. But I mean, come on, like, like, look at anything like, like, let's look at Theta, for example, which is, I mean, it's not a direct competitor, but it is uh, of sorts at a $2.7 billion market cap. So you still have a bunch of X's in here. Um, and, uh, and, and I think, yeah, I agree with you, Brad. Uh, split will be, our AOs will be larger than, than Theta in 2025 um, because Theta is, is uh, <clears throat> I don't even know, is Theta a, um, a layer one? I have no idea even actually that, uh, but nonetheless, um, AOs will be fast. It'll be cheap and uh, it'll be a blockchain that any type of uh, content delivery uh, needs to be done on, whether it's decentralized YouTube or decentralized Netflix or or whatever. 
whatever it is, um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty critical, and it's a very use case specific type of blockchain. But you know, think about all the streaming platforms and how much value Netflix has in it, and uh, and then imagine um, having a much more. And actually, this is a, a kind of ties back to the Google cl uh, article that we had earlier talking about cloud storage. Um, but in the when I first learned about AOS, they had a, a, a slide in there that talked about um, using AOS for content delivery versus like Google Web Cloud or Google Cloud, whatever. And it was way, 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 way cheaper. So um, anyway, uh, guys, I got to jump. Um, are you moving to AOS? Um, what do you mean moving to AOS? Um, I already have uh, a lot of AOS and I'm holding all my AOS and I don't plan on selling it because um, why would you sell a token before it launches its mainnet? Um, that would be crazy. And uh, also, I mean, it, it should be in, uh, isn't the co-founder of YouTube advising AOS? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, if, if, if he is, it'd be news to me. Um, but I only do catch up calls with Ehrman, the founder of AOS, like once every two months. So um, you should hook up, you should start a Kyle Coy to hook up members with whitelist spots for NFT drops would be sick. Um, actually, <clears throat> um, I do, I do want to do some type of like Kyle NFT collection or something like that, uh, for everybody who believes in me. Um, and really just make sure that like I hook up, uh, people who are holding this NFT with like, like maybe I'll just invest some money and like take some of my investments and like put some of that and just make it rain on these NFT holders, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And just kind of think of everything that I can to add value to, um, to people who are holding my NFTs. So if you are an artist and you're interested in, in helping me draw up some cool NFTs for myself and, and, and maybe by being an artist, you get one of these things or two of these things. Uh, let me know guys. Um, uh, and you can just do that in the same link below where we're also looking for researchers, thumbnail artists and editors. Um, also you could just say, Hey, what up? I want to design Kyle NFTs. Um, so anyway, guys, okay. I'm going to tap out tonight. Um, I'm a little bit sad I won't see you guys tomorrow or Sunday, actually, to be honest. This is actually pretty fun. Um, so uh, so anyway, um, I guess I will see you on Monday, but um, I am doing that interview tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. Tomorrow's Friday. I will see you tomorrow. Holy shit. Good news, guys. Wow. I almost went to, I almost got depressed there for a little while. Okay, cool. So, uh, okay, so I don't feel so bad saying bye to you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, later.